In this video, we're going to show the process of creating a legend from scratch. In order to first do this, of course, we need to be able to create our own legend view. So underneath view, we're going to come up here and we're going to create a legend view. So select on legends, then pick the word legend off the list. We now have the option to name our legend view. In this case, let's call it a symbol legend because that's going to be the type of legend that we're going to try to do. Next, for the scale, one inch equals a foot works just fine. So if it's not already the default for you, come over here to the pull up list and find the one inch equals a foot and select on that and uh, click on OK. We're now inside of our blank legend drawing environment. Now, since we're going to be doing a symbol legend, the kind of entities that we're going to be placing in here are going to be considered symbols. These are two dimensional line work kind of entities that get placed here in our blank drawing sheet. So to find those, and because they're two dimensional, we're going to come up to the annotate tab and the annotate tab pretty much holds almost all of the two dimensional objects that are really inside of Revit. And from the annotate tab, we're going to come all the way over to the right hand side and we're going to pick on the symbol icon. Once we've done that, we can look over here on the left and we can see underneath properties, we have our type selector list. And from our type selector list, we have a big wide range of symbols that we can place in. This ranges everything from section symbols to weld symbols to typical notes. Most of that symbology is all going to be considered a symbol. Now for this, we're just going to place in six of our symbols. We're going to put some text next to it. And then we're going to put a nice little title on the top of our legend in order to be able to finish it off. To begin with, let's go ahead and find our symbols. In this instance, I want to drop in a handful of weld symbols to begin with. So this is alphabetical, so we're going to be looking for our W's. And we want to drop in a top weld symbol to begin with. I'll zoom in just a little bit so that we can see it. I will point out that any place that there's blue, you can click on it. And if you needed to put in any kind of information in those spots, you can just by typing in. So if I would select on one, click, and then I could type a letter or a number if I wish. In this case, I'm just going to leave it the way that it is. Next, we're going to drop in five more symbols. The next one's going to be the weld symbol both. Previous one was top. This one is going to be both. You can kind of see how they like to line up with one another. You even get this blue line here that says, yes, they are lined up. The one after this is going to be weld symbol back weld. So weld symbol. And now we're looking for back weld. It shows up right here. Now, they don't have to be perfectly aligned, but I usually like to do that just to keep things clean. There's weld symbol melt through, and that's toward the very bottom of the list here. And we can drop that on. There's going to be another one, and this time I don't really want to use a weld symbol. I'd like to sort of get away from doing that. And let's go ahead and try to put a view title on here. So we're going to look for the Vs. Here we have a view title. We'll drop this on. You notice it doesn't line up quite as nice and neat because of the way it's constructed. It's not the same kind of symbol, but you can kind of eyeball it and get it in the right spot. And then we're going to also place in a view reference right underneath that. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is we need to draw in the outside border for this legend. There aren't any tools in Revit that's going to automate this process for us, but there are a few different things that we can do to maybe help speed this up a little bit. So the first thing we can do is we're going to come up here and we're going to use detail lines in order to be able to draw in the outside border of our legend. So select on detail line. You can select on whatever line width makes you comfortable. In this case, I'm just going to stick with medium lines. In order to make this a little bit quicker, we're going to come up here and we're going to select on the rectangle tool, click once, and then just sort of move over in this direction. Now what I'm going to be looking for is to create a box that's about eight foot by seven foot. That should be plenty big enough for all this symbology. In fact, it might be a little bit too big for all the symbology, to be honest, but it's just a nice, almost standard looking shape about it. Once we have a eight foot by seven foot box, the next thing that we can do is we can use our line work tool to continue on. And in this case, I'm going to select on detail line. And I'm just going to move straight down here on the side, one foot down, I'm going to click once, and then I'm going to move straight over to the other side and click. Now that I have that line there, I'm just going to copy this line down multiple times so that I have each of my different spots that I can put my symbology. So select on the line, come up here to copy. We need to have a base point for our copy. Also make sure that multiple is checkmarked. 
and click here at the intersection of these two lines. Now we're just going to do intersection of, intersection of, intersection of, or endpoint of, all the way on down until we have an evenly broke up symbol legend. Now on one side, we're going to have our symbols. On the other side, we're going to have text associated with them. In order to be able to break this up in two, we need to draw yet another line. We're going to do it from the midpoint of this to this location right here. Now it gets to be a little bit easy. We can just select on all these, kind of move them all in one big mass migration on over here. I kind of tried to center this one up so I wouldn't have to adjust it too much. Next, select on one of these and just kind of bring each one of these into their own cells. You don't have to be perfect about this. We're not actually putting together a set of working drawings at the moment, but the more that you get into the habit of trying to be accurate and put everything in line, the faster you'll be able to build those skills up when it comes time to actually produce your own sets. Now that we get this up here and they're all basically lined up with one another, we now need to put some text in each one of these describing which each one of these different items happen to be. So we're going to have four pieces of text that are going to be talking about welds and two that are going to be talking about views. So we're going to come up here and we're going to select text off of the annotate ribbon in order to be able to begin to label these legends. Now this 332nd aerial realistically might be the right size, but I want us to be able to read it very well on the screen. So I'm going to change this to be 8th inch aerial. Move over here and then just click somewhere around the area where I currently have my cursor. We can always move this later if need be. And we're going to type in weld symbol top here. And just sort of click somewhere out in space. You kind of see it tries to readjust itself anyway. The reason why I kind of did this in this case is because right now in my text command, it was told to be aligned to the center. If we didn't want it to be aligned to the center, we could say align left instead. And it would have instead just placed it to the left instead of doing it at the center of the spot that we just picked. Not a big deal though, we can just select on it now and then move it to the right location by clicking on where we see these little four arrows here and just sort of moving it over to wherever it is we like it to be lined up at. Now the next thing I like to do in order to speed things along is to highlight on this and just copy it on down because we can just change this text. And the nice thing about this is, is it's going to keep everything the same spacing away from the top and the bottom. So it's going to look uniform as we look at it here in our view. Now we click on the individual pieces of text, like in this case, it's going to be the weld symbol. And instead of being top, this happens to be a weld symbol both. This next one is going to be a weld symbol back weld. The one after that is going to be a weld symbol melt through. I'll point out that these can always be adjusted after the fact, just by clicking on the little arrows there and just sort of eyeballing them on over. The bottom two are going to be view title and view reference, respectively. And I'll just move view title over just a little bit so it's a little bit better lined up than what it was before. Now the last thing is if we want to be able to add some sort of header going across the top of this legend so it looks nice and bold and uh, everybody can notice it, I like to do usually the same thing. I just sort of copy the text up, place it here in the middle, type in the middle here, and this is just going to be a symbol legend. It's up to you if you want to make it all caps. I kind of like to make it stand out. And then once it's highlighted in blue, which it should be because it was already selected on, you can then change this to be quarter inch aerial. And now we have the larger text. I will point out that if we need to be able to just bump this just a little bit, we can highlight on one of these and then use the arrow keys on our keyboard. That's the nudge command in order to be able to nudge this over and have these things be a little bit better centered on our screen. So by using our symbols, text, and our line tools, we can create legends fairly easily and quickly for our construction document sets.